this video, we are going to walk through how to set up a contact form properly in Squarespace using Squarespace's contact form block. Uh, and we are also going to touch on a few of the bits of connectivity and how to do this the best way and make sure that you even have a backup system working for you. All right. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get into the back end of our site. So I just press the escape button on my keyboard. And once you're in here, you just got to decide where you want the contact form. So I'm just going to throw it on our sample site here at the bottom of this homepage. I'm going to remove this and add it in here. So I'm just going to click edit. Once this opens, actually, I'll just let that section be. I'll hit add section and you could do like contact here, but I am just going to start with blank from there. I'm going to change the width. So it's a little bit thinner. Let's just start there. Might be a little bit too wide for me, but go there. Okay. So when you're on the page, you'll see it's what do you do now? Well, you hover over the middle dead center of the page and you'll get these little plus signs. You'll click there and then you could start typing in form. That's the icon there. So you could click on that. Once you're in here, we could probably do an in-depth video of how to actually like set up the form field. This is the, where you do all of that. Uh, but for now, I'm going to just talk about the overview of a form and getting it set up to make sure it goes to your email or Google sheet or MailChimp or whatever that may be. So first thing is form name. When you get a form in your email, it will, I'll show you in a moment, it'll say form submission and then it'll say form name. If you have one on your contact page, you could put contact form. You have a call to action. You could have it there. If you want to know where the form came from, you could have it here. So there are a lot of options for this, but let's just say contact form uh, button text. What would you like it to say here? Submit or send. I'll just change it to send for now. Edit form field. So you'll just click there. And now this is where these form fields are. Typically, uh, subject is not required for this type of message. So I'll just remove that. And I'm going to leave, for example, let's just add a field. I'm going to add phone. It's funny. Actually, I, when I add phone, I don't add phone that way. I add a number box uh, for form. So where is that? Time currency number. So I add this for phone number, mainly because locking someone into those three boxes is a little bit restricting. Phone number and then do, I'm not going to do required. I'm just going to let it be and I'm going to go back edit. That's so interesting. It's a new feature. Okay. So I will drag that. I will leave it right. Okay. So phone number is optional. Done. Go back. Great. Okay. So there's that. Now the core of this video here, we're going to go to design. Take a look at that. You can make this quick adjustment of any of this light boxes where it becomes a button and they click on it to access it storage. So this is where the, the magic happens. So first and foremost is email. So I'm going to change this to a different email. It usually defaults to whatever your account, whatever account you're logged into to that email whoever's creating a form. So if you're a designer, you're going to always want to change it for your client. But in this case, you want to change it to whatever email is best. So here is uh, the email we're going to use. What I do is a backup. So you could connect MailChimp, you could connect Zapier, you could connect Google Drive. This is what I do. And Google Drive is to a Google Sheet. I'm going to, this is what I do. I set up the email for most basic forms. I set up the email and I also set up Google Drive as a backup. It does it automatically. It'll put it into a Google form, a Google sheet. And that process is just running in the background automated so that you have a second account of every entry just in case something were to happen to the email it doesn't go through. It's not a likely case, but just because uh, redundancy is so useful with software, Google Drive, click connect. What it'll do is it just popped up the screen and you just so log into the proper email and then from there you'll click allow so this will create a new spreadsheet in google drive to store form responses to complete the process save changes to your web page so here I'm going to type in, let's say sample website form submissions. So what it's going to do, and I'll go here right now to show you, this is the Google drive. You're going to see updates come in here, but there's nothing here now uh, for today. So if I click here and I go back, so it's connecting to Google drive, working that magic. I don't know if it happens right away. It happens right away. So you see here, it's now created this page. Beautiful, wonderful, great. So copy that. And now we have both connected. So now both of those are connected. MailChimp works very similar to Google Drive uh, to connect it. And then Zapier is very simple to connect and integrate as well. So that gets you going and that gets, gets you the ability to get this working. But now let's test it. Let's make sure that the form is working. So click save. And what I'm going to do here is fill this out. Let's just do any email. So I'll cool. All right. So that is all set up. I'll show you here. There's nothing in the email at the moment and I'll hit send. So it's submitted. This is the postscript. So it says, thank you. You could adjust
discuss that. You could send it to a thank you page. I recommend sending it to a thank you page. But for now, let's see. And also, while that's happening, you'll see here this submission is now in the document, which is really user friendly, really simple to use. And it even shows you when it's submitted. So that's useful as well. Name, email, phone. If you add a column, it'll add it. And so it's really easy to work with and create this as you go as a backup. Let me go back to the email. Uh, I don't see a new submission here. Let me try one more thing. And just like that, you could see it here. We have this form submission. So like I mentioned, this will always come as default text, but you could change this text here. So someone knows uh, where it's coming from. To, sometimes with clients, I'll put contact form from website just because they're like, what is this? I'm getting an email from Squarespace. And then when you click on it, it looks something like this. So here you can see form submission, contact form sent via and if you click here, it'll take you to the website, name, email, phone number, and then the message. Often what people do, and this is like a pro tip, often what people do is if they want to reply, like this is an inquiry to their business or something, what they'll do is they'll just hit reply, which it will reply to the specific email. So it will go to this email. But what I always recommend is that you actually start a new email. So you just copy this, compose, and then just like write your message, signature. And then at the bottom, what I'll do is I'll just add a few lines there and I'll put original message and then paste it there and good to go. So I could write my whole email, give a subject line. It's a little bit more formal than doing a response to like an RE form submission contact form. It's, it's a nice way, especially if you're working with a, it's potentially a client or you're, someone you're going to work with in the future. It's a nice way to be a bit more professional in your response and in the email chain of where things are starting and, and where they're heading. So you, you could now adjust the contact, the subject line, all of that stuff. So that's a big background. There's a few different tips there as well for you. So that is a simple way to create a form on your website. If you want to create multiple forms on your site, uh, you can test to try to get them all to upload to the same document. There might be, uh, I haven't tried that myself recently, so maybe I will and create another video on it. The one thing I do foresee as a possible issue is that if one form has name, email, phone, and message, and another one has just name, email, message, it won't naturally sync to be perfect. That would be my assumption. But at the end of the day, there are things you could do within Google Sheets to aggregate data from multiple Google Sheets. So all of that said, at the end of the day, I do know that there are ways for you to aggregate data within Google Sheets so that it all shows up in one place for you. Hey, thank you for watching this video. If you got value from this video, I have some resources for you that I bet will be helpful. Check out the link down below where you could access more resources that are free for you, for your website, for your online presence, for your design, all of that. Check out the link below. With that, if you got value from this video, let me know by hitting that like button. When you hit the like button, it tells the YouTube algorithm some important information, but it also tells me that you got value from this video. And if you want more content like this, please subscribe. When you subscribe, you'll make sure you get updated every single week. We publish a new video every single Friday. So when you hit that subscribe button, you will be notified. And with that, have a great day wherever you are in the world, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.